The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, right, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I am on Grady White's award-winning boat, the Express 330. This is clearly an offshore boat, but she's also got a nod towards family accommodations and entertaining. We'll begin with the operational features. Just as we come aboard, we go over to the port hand side, and we have access to the battery switches and fuel manifolds. The ship's electrical panels on the aft bulkhead down below divided into 12 volt and 120 volt. With the aft bench seat folded up out of the way, we have easy access to the components underneath the deck that include the Fisher Panda generator with a diesel tank just next door, 13 gallons. The fuel filters are just ahead. Alongside, we've got controls to access the seacocks, and the raw water strainers are just to either side. The helm deck is two steps up from the cockpit deck, and for this model year, Grady White has made several changes to this area, most notably in the seating arrangements, the helm styling, and in the visibility. Let's drill down to some of the finer details. The windows have been raised to provide more visibility. To either side of the compass, there's storage compartments, and those used to house the gauges, which have now been moved down to the lower panel. And the reason for that is because when the electrical panel was raised, you weren't able to see the gauges up there. With this panel raised, now we have open real estate for two 12-inch displays. The electronic ignitions are below the wheel. The digital engine controls have multiple options. And of course, we have the Yamaha Helmmaster joystick. Naturally, the captain gets the best seat in the house. This is the Deluxe Platinum Edition helm seat. Armrested flip up and down, flip up bolster. The seat back is adjustable. It swivels, slides, and is also adjustable for height. And a new molded in footrest has been added to the helm. The fiberglass hardtop with two and three quarter inch supports is standard. There's an option for an aluminum hardtop that's got a full glass enclosure. Opening side windows are hinged from the back so they scoop air into the cockpit. Transitions to the side decks are eased by stairs to both sides. Grab handles go all the way up alongside the overhead. There's 13 inches of space between the cabin sides and the rail. At the working end of the bow, the rails come up 17 inches. We've got a Lumar windlass for foot controls to the side. Fresh water wash down over to the starboard side access to the road compartment. We have 15 feet of chain and 300 feet of rope road. Chocks lead to the cleat so we can secure the road. Any water that comes over the bow is going to get directed down the side decks and over these molded diverters that keeps it out of the cockpit. But even if any water did make it into the cockpit, there are dual inch and a half cockpit drains to either side and that also makes it convenient for washdowns. Our test boat's powered by a pair of Yamaha V8 350 four strokes and it's nice that Grady White included little service platforms at the transom. Now before we get underway, let's take a look at around the lift because Grady White's CV2 hulls have some unique features. It begins with a 19 degree dead rise at the transom and instead of maintaining that dead rise as we move forward, here it's variable, narrowing as we reach the bow. These two lifting strakes also knock down spray along with a Carolina flared bow. Now let's get around the water and see how it all comes together. With the pair of 350 horsepower Yamaha four strokes at the transom, we hit 44.2 knots while burning 69.4 gallons per hour. Best economy was at 3,500 RPM and 23.2 knots. That speed turned in a 21.5 gallon per hour fuel burn, which meant a range of 321.7 nautical miles. Plenty for the long overnight runs to the canyons and back. We reached planing speed in 3.1 seconds, 20 miles per hour in 4.6, and 30 miles per hour came and went in 7.7 seconds. She presents a safe ride with 5 feet of freeboard at the bow, tapering down to 3 feet 8 inches at the stern. Well, I have to say, the Express 330 certainly has the feel of a strong sea boat. With this variable dead rise hull, she tracks nice and straight in both a quartering sea and a beam sea. Now granted, we don't have much of a sea here to judge that on, but you can certainly tell with an experienced hand. She comes up on plane with very little bow rise, and she tracks straight and true. She turns nicely, and I didn't notice any chine walk at all during the turns, but she does grab just enough to make the turn efficient. This is clearly an offshore performing boat. I would definitely take this boat out to the canyons, especially since it's an overnight trip and you've got accommodations down below. The only thing I'd really like to see is the steering knob. Of course, at the dock, her joystick makes short work of even the most difficult situations. That's our look at the performance and operational features of the Grady White Express 330. Be sure to watch our video of the boat's fishing and cruising features. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.